U.S. presidential contender Ron Paul has warned that his country is slipping into a fascist system with a broke government ruled by big business. Speaking to supporters in Kansas City, the Republican candidate said Americans' individual liberties were being stripped away. Let's now talk to radio host and author Stephen Lemon, who's just come off air, just done a radio programme. Good to have you here on RT, Stephen. Now, do you agree with Ron Paul then? Oh, I absolutely agree with him, Bill. America is a fascist state. The only thing I disagree with Ron Paul about is it's not slipping into it. It's deep into it. Imagine, Bill, in the 1930s, 1935, I believe, Sinclair Lewis wrote a novel called It Can't Happen Here. It was about a politician riding to power on populist rhetoric, and when he got it, he became a fascist despot. George Selders, the marvelous U.S. journalist that lived, I believe, to over age 100, died in the mid-1990s. He worried about U.S. fascism in the, 19, in the 1930s under Franklin Roosevelt. A man named Bertram Gross in the 1980s wrote a book called Friendly Fascism. He said when it arrives, it'll be with a friendly face and he used Ronald Reagan as a fascist prototype, smiling while brutalizing and destroying U.S. freedoms. Today, Bill, we have deeply repressive police state laws. The most recent was slipped into the National Defense Authorization Act on the last day of 2011 that gives the U.S. government the right to let the military arrest and throw in military dungeons U.S. citizens anywhere in the world, charge them, leave them uncharged, give them a military tribunal trial, give them no trial, let them rot in prisons forever. If that isn't a fascist dictatorship, what is? All right, Stephen, he was also targeting big business. Uh, in many ways, is he trying to jump on the Occupy Wall Street movement here? Well, he is very upset, uh, especially about the Federal Reserve. Uh, I am not a Ron Paul supporter, but I absolutely support his opposition to imperial wars. He has gone after the Federal Reserve for years. It's a repressive uh, group. It's privately owned and operated. It isn't federal, and it doesn't have reserves, as Ron Paul explains. It's owned by the major bankers mainly the Wall Street ones, and they use money power to create more of it at the public's expense. As long as the system goes on this way, that in democracy cannot coexist. It doesn't. And these fascist bankers are allied with the fascist militarists. They're brutalizing people abroad. They're brutalizing people at home. That's the reality Americans have to wake up to. They need to understand it. They need to know their liberties are fast disappearing. And only they, only they can change things. They're very dismissive. Occupy Wall Street has woken up. But we need mass American awakening to take on this beast that's okay. destroying Okay, them. Stephen, in what way then should you see this mass awakening? Ron Paul is talking about the predictions of future unrest. Is he actually encouraging unrest in order for the people's views to be heard? Well, I think sooner or later it comes. Look what happened in, in Tsarist Russia in 1917. Repression got severe enough. People rose up. They overthrew the dictatorship. Look what's going on in Greece right now. Furious people, their lives are being destroyed in real time. I think it's only a matter of time before they don't just rally and storm in front of the parliament, but they break into it and they haul these criminal prosecute, uh, politicians out by the scruff of their necks and they either put them on trial or they hang them. They deserve to be hanged. They're criminals. They're not serving their people. They've sold them into deep poverty. The same thing is happening across Europe. It's happening in America more slowly. Sooner or later, what Gerald Salenti says is true. When people lose everything and have nothing else to lose, they lose it. They lose it. That means violence. That means rising up against a repressive power and overthrowing it. And the marvelous anthropologist Margaret Mead once said, it doesn't take a lot of people to, to, to do this. She said, never, uh, never, never underestimate the power of a few committed people to change the world. And her punchline was, 
It's the only way it ever happens. Indeed so. It's up to us. Stephen, your words there will stir up a lot of reaction, many against and many for your views. Thank you very much indeed, Stephen. Stephen Lemon joining us live there, radio host and author.